Okay. Um, so we already took care of inserting the percents in column C using uh, absolute references. And then we selected A4 through A11 and C4 and C11 and inserted this chart, uh, 3D pie chart. And so with this chart uh, inserted, just like any other time you insert something, you get contextual tabs on your ribbon. So, um, I don't know why it's lit there right now. Uh, for some reason, it's not letting me see your top, but that's okay. Uh, so you have some context contextual tabs up top, um, chart design and format it should be, yes. Good, now I can see it. Okay, um, it wasn't you. I think it was something on my screen that wasn't allowing me to see it. Um, so there are lots of different things within here. and We'll uh, see different things that we can do to this throughout the semester. But the first thing I wanna show you is honestly, in my mind, the most important. Because generally speaking, like on the last few projects we dealt with, you had your chart directly on the same page as the data. You know, and it was easy to see, it was right underneath it, and that was fine. But most of the time, if you're going to do presentations of some kind and you need to use Excel to do so, it will be it will be best if the chart is on its own sheet because you don't need to show them the data. You just need to show them the image and then talk from the data uh, from talk about the data from the image from the chart. And so what we're going to do is we're going to move the chart to its own sheet. Now, before we do this, um, I'll let you know that most people will add a new sheet and then copy and paste or cut and paste the chart over it. That is not moving the chart to its own sheet. Um, that is moving the chart to a new location. It's kind of weird to say it like that because it sounds the same, but that's, that's just moving the chart to another location. When I say move it to its own sheet, I literally mean the entire sheet of that workbook becomes the chart. And it looks a lot different from just copy and pasting it. Normally I would uh, demonstrate the both, both of them so you can see the difference. But in this case, we'll just show you what it looks like on a new sheet. Or sorry, on a on when it, it becomes its own sheet. And I think you all will be able to see the difference off the bat. Okay, so let's go to the chart design tab, which you're already on, and then locate the location group. Remember, groups are named by the bottom there. So the location group, right? Notice how the command is called move chart there. Select move chart. You get two options. You get object in and you tell it what sheet to put it in, or you get the first option, which is my favorite, and it's called new sheet. So click on new sheet. You are now able to name what the new sheet will be. We're gonna call it revenue chart. Now look just to the left of those two um, um, radio buttons. Notice how the one that's for a new sheet, look how, look how that looks. It looks like it's, it is the whole sheet, right? It's kind of a preview of it. Look, look how and underneath that, look what it looks like when you move a chart into another sheet, right? You still have the sheet in the background and it's actually smaller than it. So let's click OK and you all will see what happens when you make it the sheet. Notice we don't have any cells in the background, right? It literally is the entire sheet. So when you print, you're going to print just, if you were to print, this is what you would see, okay? You wouldn't see anything in the background. It would literally take up that whole um, whole page, depending on how you had your page border set up and your margins margin set up. It would take over that entire thing. Uh, another thing to speak on with this is that generally, when you do move a chart to its own sheet or you have a chart on its own sheet, the uh, the the slide the zoom slide rule with ruler uh, will be zoomed um, outward. Some so it'll usually be less than so that's up to you if you want to ever change it or not. Uh, I usually am cool with it. Some people have uh, trouble seeing things like that though, and I completely understand it. Um, so just to let you know, it will automatically do that. It's going to automatically um, zoom out. So you may want to zoom in if you need to. Okay. All right. That was the first thing. Um, next, what we're going to do is we are going to format. Um, this pie chart. So we're going to make some changes to it. Um, first and foremost, let's click on chart title. Okay. And chart title is one of the elements here. Uh, notice if you double click within, you get that insertion point and you're able to type directly in here. We saw uh, some weeks ago that if you are to just click on it, you're able to change type direct on it. You won't see a change until you press enter, uh, unless you look at the formula bar. 
So for the title, uh, we're going to call this revenue sources. Okay. Excellent. So there's revenue sources. Now, yes, good. I was going to tell you that. Yeah, good. Um, one thing to note there, see, so notice how she pressed enter and added that extra spacing there. Um, you want to be careful of that because as she noticed too, and you all may have seen, that she will then lift it up some. Uh, so you got to think about how you want it to look. And some people do that on purpose because they want it to lift up a little more from the chart. Uh, but you can always move it yourself if that's the case. Um, so next, um, with the uh, title still selected, so if you just click on it, yep, right there. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to make a format change to this. So go to the format contextual tab. So remember our tabs at the top format. Or, oh, yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, and then in the word art styles group. If you can click on the more button for me. Excellent. Yep. Yep. What we want to do is we want to select the red accent to outline accent to word art style, which is yes, that one. Good. Okay. And we're also going to change the font size. So where do you think you can change the font size? Good. So I want to see what you would do. Yes. So go ahead and click there and we'll change that to 32. Notice that she also, she thought about it. She thought about right clicking. Uh, I think she was trying to get that uh, mini toolbar that comes up at the top sometimes when you select things. That is also another way to do that. If you had selected the text, it would have appeared at the top. And the other option she tried, she right, she right clicked on it. When you right click on it, you may have noticed that there was an option for font there as well. So everything that she did, those are ways to get uh, to changing the font. Okay, so you weren't you weren't doing anything wrong, Princess. Everything that you did was actually great because you showed all three different methods uh, of getting there. Okay. So, um, let's see. So uh, that was the chart title, and we we changed the word we changed it to a word art style. So you all saw we could do that, and then any text that was on uh, a chart we can change as we normally would. So it's no different. Um, so no worries there if you're ever on a chart and not within a cell. Um, so the chart title is just one chart element, though, so, and chart elements are uh, all of the things that we have uh, on our chart, like the title, like the actual pie chart, um, like the legends, like data labels. If we add them, there's so much that we can do here, so much. Uh, and so we're going to take a look at a couple of these things now. So. What we're going to do is first we're going to add in another chart element. Uh, and so two ways to do that. If you go to the chart design tab. Over in the chart layouts group. You'll see add chart element. If you click on that. You can uh, there are different elements here, as you can see. Uh, Notice how lines is gone, trend lines is gone, and up down bars is also gone because we don't have a use for those right now because of the type of chart we have. But chart title, which uh, she, we already have, that's here. Um, data labels is something that we're actually about to add right now. Uh, I'm going to show you how to do it in a different way though. Um, in a second. Um, and then legend, which we already have in, we could tell it where it's going to where it should go. Okay. So, but I just want to show you guys how to do that from the ribbon and from the uh, add chart commands. But there's another way to do this as well, and it's the most common way. And on your chart with it selected, you will notice that there's a green plus sign in the upper right. Yep. If you click on that, that is also how you can add chart item or uh, chart elements. So if you want to make sure that the uh, uh, oh, can you do that again. Yes. Um, could you deselect the legend box? 
notice that the legend goes away at the bottom. Okay. Um, what we're going to do now is we are going to um, we're going to add some data labels. So if you go to the arrow there, click on that arrow. Yes. And then go to more options. And so all those options we did see, what would happen is that those are different um, ways it could we could have it placed. Like you can have it placed in the center, you can have it placed in the middle of the slice, have it be a data call out, which kind of like points to it outside of the chart. Um, but what I wanted you to do was to uh, go to more options because it is one way, one way, one way we can open up the pane that we now see the format da data labels or data labels pane um, so this is just generally i call it the format pane um, because whatever it is that you're formatting at that time that's what we'll, that's what title will be up there it'll be format whatever it is that you're changing uh, but this gives you different options for what you're working with um, that's why i like to show it to everyone so this is one way that you can get to it for, say, the chart title, the legend, or the data tables, or any other element that you have on that plus sign. Um, I'll show you another way in a second. But let's actually format these data labels. Notice that they are now on the actual chart. So you can see them on their slices. Um, so yes, let's make some changes to this. So uh, at the moment, notice that the uh, one that looks like a column chart is selected at the top there. If you uh, can you scroll up to that and just hover over it. So notice that says label options. Um, these four icons you see on this uh, row here, the little paint bucket, the uh, pentagon, the uh, size thing, and then the uh, column chart. These are you will normally see um, these icons appear in the format pane. The paint bucket usually has to do with the color and the line and borders. Um, the pentagon has to do with effects, like three-dimensional effects, things like that. Um, the one that has to do that looks like size changes actually has to do with the sizes and properties. And then the last one usually has to do with the numbers or the format of numbers or things that are on there. So in this case, the labels are the only thing that you actually put on top of a chart. So that's why it's called label options. So um, under label options we are going to actually make some changes notice how label options has a little arrow next to it if you were to click on that arrow um then we're green we have the green labeled options click on the arrow next to it up oops so label option uh you you're in the right spot before um, just I want to click on the black arrow that's next to the green label options. Yep, click on that. Yep. Cool. All right. So notice everyone that it uh, that it uh, makes it go away. So that's how you can open up that menu. So click on it again. And the reason I'm telling you all that is because generally when you come to the format pane, most of those are closed. And so sometimes people think that there's an error because they don't see it. You just have to open it up. All right, so with this open now, um, notice that it says the label contains, and we have a couple of things checked off. We have show leader lines, we have value checked off. Um, we don't want those to be appear here. The value was the value that was selected earlier before, okay? What we want to have shown here now actually is you can uncheck those two boxes, uncheck the value in the show leader lines. Let's check percentage and let's check category name. So that's cool. So uh, one thing I will say is that let's say you did not have, we actually calculated percentages, right? Okay. Um, you'll notice that these are the same percentages that we got when we did the calculation. It is not doing, it is not doing this based off of those numbers. It is doing this based off of the actual percentage. So it calculates it itself as well. If you have percentage selected. If we had value selected, it would have just said, oh, well, this is the value you got. Okay, so there's a difference there. Value will give you the actual value from the data source. Percentage will give you the, it'll, it'll do the percentage calculations for you. All right, so uh, let's go down towards the bottom there where we have label position. For the label position, let's select outside in. 
sweet. So that way it's a little easier for you all to see um, the label. Because when it was on it, some of the colors are a little, make it a little harder to uh, understand. Okay. Uh, another thing to notice is that when you deal with data labels, all of the data labels are selected, right? So uh, we'll go to one of those and right click on them. And let's go to font. We're going to modify the font. Now remember, all of them are selected at the time. Let's change it to be bold. So change the font style to bold from regular. Font style, yep. And change the size to 10. Oop. Okay, cool. Uh, yep, change it to 10. All right. Notice how all of them changed from us just uh, modifying one. That's because they were all selected. And so when, you, when you're dealing with the data labels, they're all selected. If you make a change to one, it changes all of them. That's very important to know. If you wanted to just uh, look at one thing, only one, you would have to like double click on it. So uh, to show you another example of that, uh, let's double click on any slice outside of the, yeah, cool. Uh, 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 sorry, on a, yes, so, so the, this format at a label. So that means we're dealing with that one label that is selected, okay? All right, so we're gonna do something else now. So uh, click on one, one slice of pie, just click once on one slice of pie. Uh, no, not on the data label, but actually the actual pie. So notice when you select, when you click on on that, you get these little blue dots around it at each of the uh, sections of the slices. That means the entire thing is selected. You see one in the center too. So the entire thing is selected. That means we are formatting the entire data series. Notice also in your formula bar, you see a function that's called series, and it tells you it's getting information from um, the revenue sheet A4 to A11 in uh, C4 to C11. And that one there is the type of chart that you got from it. Um, so she just double clicked on it. And so now we only have one point showing. Uh, so notice the format pane says data point now instead of data series. So click, some, click, click in some white space somewhere and then come back and select, um, and select um, the, the whole chart again by clicking once. Sweet. Okay, because we want to make a change to the whole data series. So if you go to the format pane over to the right, uh, we're going to make a change to the effect. So since the Pentagon, you already have it selected, so we're already on the effect. Um, let's change the, the 3D format. Format. Great. And so on the top bevel gallery, uh, click that drop down. And select cool slant. Okay. So yeah, go ahead and just pick slant since uh, you don't have a cool slant on yours. Um, in the width box for that top bevel. Change that to 40. Change the height to 40 as well. Wait. Look at the changes we have happen to the chart. It looks bulkier, right? We're going to do the same thing for the bottom bevel. We'll give it the same type. We'll give it that slant. And let's change the width and height to 40. And you'll notice that, yeah, you can actually see it coming in more now. Okay. Uh, so it's like a disc, but round it off. All right. Let's change the material now. Um, change the material to metal. Now we get this little glossier kind of shininess to it. All right. And that's uh that's 
it for the 3D format. Um, let's change the shadow now. So in the shadow, click on the preset um, arrow. Yes. And let's. Um, you scroll down a little bit. Good. So I wanted to look at the perspectives. So there are a lot of different shadow options, as you can see, outer and inner. But let's do a perspective one. So pick the um, the below perspective. So I think that's that one there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it gives that shadow underneath it. It makes it look more three dimensional. All right, great. So we just changed the way our um, our three D pie chart actually looks by adding some different effects. So really, this is still the same. We just added some effects to it. We uh, made it have more of a bevel, uh, which gives it a more even more three dimensional effect. Allows it to kind of pop out or pop inward, depending on what you would select. We even changed the um, the type of um, material that it was quote unquote made of, so that the lighting on it would kind of change and we get that little sheer in the front. Uh, we also added a shadow to it, uh, so that we could make it look even more three dimensional. So um, we made a lot of changes to this. We wanted to make it. We wanted to make those changes to the entire series. So we have uh, one more change to the entire series that we're going to make. So if you would go to the um, format pane, and we're going to look at the series options. So that's the little column chart. Oh no, sorry, the format pane. So the the yeah, so sorry, yep. Click on that little column chart there. Yeah, we're going to make changes to the series. And so for a pie chart, we have two things we can do. We can change the angle of the first slice. So what that means is this is going to rotate, and it'll, this this could be used to uh, to have a certain um, piece in the front that you want to show or display to someone. So you can uh, drag the slide slide uh, the slide ruler for it, or you can type in the number yourself. In our case, we know what the number is. We want 250, but notice how much fun it is to slide that around. So you can type in 250, or you can drag it to 250, whatever you want to do. But it needs to be 250. Sweet. Okay. Recall there are 360 degrees in the complete rotation. That may be helpful to uh, to some of you. Um, okay, great. So the last thing on here is a pie explosion. So I want you just to drag the slider so that people can understand what that's going to do. It literally explodes the pie. So you use those uh, pieces. Of it. So we'll take that back to zero. Oh. Uh, um, let's take that. Yeah, let's take that back to zero. And so that's really too because it, it makes it a little easier to kind of see what's going on. Uh, but most of the time, people will only do it for one slice. Now, as uh, Princess demonstrated earlier, to have only one slice selected, you need to actually click on that slice um, until it is the only one selected. So if you could, Princess, go to the property text slice and click on that again. And then double click maybe if you have to. Yeah, there it is. It's all it's good to go. So notice now on that slice, you only have those three dots, and they're only on that slice. So one for the center and then two edges one that dictate where that slice begins and ends. So what's the point of that? Because if we only want to explode one uh one point or one slice, this is how we do so. Yeah. And so let's explode this to 20%. You can type it or you can slide to it however you would like. Well, that makes people, when they see this chart, first they're going to be like, oh, property tax, what's going on with that? Right? Or they may just think, you know, you're playing Miss Pac Man. Okay. Um, wait. And so now with the property tax still selected, let's make some more changes to it. Uh, so it, it stands out even more. So uh, with this selected, let's go back to the format data pane and go to the paint pale looking thing. Because so we're going to actually change the fill and the borders of this. Or actually just fill. So if you click on fill, a uh, couple of options you see here. Automatic is the one that is usually there. Most of the time, people think that if the color is already set to what they want and it's automatic, and they say, oh, it's good. 
Well, if you really want that specific color, you should probably change it yourself using solid fill or gradient fill. So that way it is definitely that color. Automatic is based off of the theme um, and a couple other things. So you want it to be what you want it to be. So just be careful with that. Another thing to notice is that you can use a picture as a, um, as a fill. Um, and you can have patterns of it. So if you want your face to be the part um, slice, uh, if you were trying to use this as some type of political campaign, you could put like the current person in office on something and say, see how much they are using or see how little they're using. This is all about them. You can do that too. Um, so, but let's go to, uh, let's go to gradient fill. You may recall from when we were doing the uh, conditional formatting data bars, we used the gradient fill. Gradient goes from a, a solid color to a whitish color or a whitish color to the solid color of your choice. Notice that with it selected already, uh, it's, it kept the automatic uh, colors that's there. Notice how it does have that uh, towards the top, it has more of a uh, whitish color and then it goes to a darker uh, on that slice. Uh, we are going to pick the preset gradient for it. And we're going to choose bottom spotlight accent three. So, yeah, um, light. So the fourth, fourth row. Top. Fourth, uh, fourth row. Yeah. And then the blue one. Cool. There are other things that you could change here, but for now, this is really all that um, we desire. Uh, you can scroll down on the uh, format data point so people can see what else is there. Uh, you can change the transparency of it, which means how much, how clear it is, uh, or you can make it see through. Right now, it's at zero, so you can't really see through anything. Or yeah, um, how bright it is, things like that too. So yeah. Okay. So. Um, you can save your workbook if you would like to. What? Any questions from anyone at the moment? Yeah. All right, so now we're gonna deal with uh, something that is, well, I'm, I'm gonna talk about something that is very confusing to many people. We are going to format the chart area so before we do that, I'm going to differentiate the chart area and the plot area because they are two different things. So uh, if you could, yes. So right now she has the plot area selected. Notice the plot area is where our actual chart is. If you go just outside of that to the white area, just click, click on it. That is the chart area. The chart area is the entire chart. So the back, you could think of it as like the background that the chart is on top of. The plot area is where your actual plot of the chart or the graph is. They are different. If you change the color of the plot area, it does not change the chart area. If you change the color of the chart area, it may appear in the plot area until you change the plot area's background. Notice also, uh, as Prince has pointed out, as you move around, you'll see a screen tip if you just sit and hold. It'll tell you where you have where you are currently hovering over. So that way you can differentiate between the two. One other thing, since we have the format tab shown at the moment, if you go up to the top on the ribbon with the format tab, if you go to the current selection group, look at the top there, that drop down says chart area. If you want it to go to plot area, you could click on plot area. So we're going to deal with the chart area, though. But those are the ways that you can guarantee you're in the right situation. You're in the right spot. You're modifying the correct thing you want to modify. Okay. Also, the format pane says it directly. It says, um, hey, I'm formatting chart area at this point in time. Please do not confuse plot area with chart area. As you can see, they are different. Okay. So let's go look at. Um, the format chart area, let's look at the format pane over here. We are going to change the fill and lines, which currently is already selected. We're going to change the fill to a gradient fill. Okay. 
notice that it got that same color because it noted it knows that hey you last time you chose a gradient it was this uh bottom spotlight accent three so that's probably what you want remember excel is always trying to help you here's one of those cases where this is probably not the best idea right so let's um modify uh the preset gradient so we'll change it to be a light gradient and we'll choose accent one get that little goldish undertone yeah Okay, all right, so with that selected, it makes it a lot easier to see, and it also matches our uh, title, our chart title very well. Um, let's go change the border now. So if you scroll down on the format pane, you'll see border is available. So the border for the chart area would be the very outside of the entire chart. Again, this is different from plot area. It would just put a, a, a border around the actual graph that we see, you chose, okay? So again, there's a difference between the two. We are in the right spot, we are in chart area. We're going to add a border of, notice you have um, three or oh, four options. You can have no border at all. You can have a solid line, you can have a gradient line, and you can do something automatic. Gradient line would, of course, again, go from a lighter to a darker color. Automatic will be whatever is just there, which could be no line. Most of the time, it's actually just a, a, a no line around it at all. We're going to choose a solid line for a border. And now we're uh, notice that you'd actually plotted one in, and it, it picked the color based off of the uh, theme at the current moment. So we can change that color, though. So let's click on that color, and let's change it. And let's pick a uh, red accent 2. That should be at the, uh, right next to the one you are currently have. So go up, go up to above that. Yep, red accent too. Sweet. And now I notice it's a lot darker around it. Good. But it's not completely noticeable to many people because it's not thick enough. So let's give it some thickness with the width. Let's change the width to four points. A lot more noticeable now. Excellent. All right, you can save that. All right, excellent. Only a few more things to do within this guy here. Okay, so at this point in time, we made a lot of changes to our chart. It looks a lot better. We'll learn more about some changes we can make to these charts in the future. Um, but it does look better. You can you can see our labels clearly. They're bold um, in a large enough font size. We can see our uh, percentages on them as well. But what happens if um, what happens if we had to go change some data, right? So you guys kind of take a snapshot of this in your mind. Let's go to the revenue sheet. So currently the property tax is at twenty two percent. Let's click on cell B nine. We're going to change the property tax. Uh, instead of a three, it was supposed to be an eight. Someone just mistyped. So if you could change that three to an eight. Okay. And press enter. Notice that on this sheet, it now says it should be 28%. And of course, everything else changed as well. Well, let's go back to the chart. Notice that everything automatically updated. This is another reason why we wanted to use the percentage about the value. Um, because at, those values did change, so it would not have been that big of a deal. But by having it do percentages, as soon as that value changed, it automatically updated all the percentages that were on both sheets. And so it did it at one time, instead of it having to go two steps, it only had to do one step. All right. Let's go back to the revenue worksheet. So that little change we made was cool. We made that correction, right? That three should have been an eight. So we have that fixed now. Uh, but now we're looking at this and you've done your presentation, you've shown them the chart um, and everything. And then someone says, well, what can we do differently? Um, because we want the total amount of income we have to be at 7 million, not 6.63 million. 
Um, and we, if we just were to just change that value in the cell, we get an issue, right? Because this is this is the total income. Well, maybe we could say, hmm, what if we were to change some of the local taxes? How will we be able to get a total income of seven million? And some of you may sit here and say, oh, that's pretty that's simple mathematics, right? You could subtract seven million, uh, or you, you could subtract the total income we have from seven million to see how much extra we need to add to the other local taxes. Yeah, you, we could do that. Now there are there are a couple of ways for us to actually do this within Excel uh, without us having to do that math ourselves. Um, and sometimes it's not as simple as just a subtraction. Maybe it's a certain percentage that we want to get, and we you, now you have to calculate. Well, how does that change the other values? Um, so instead of us trying to figure this out mathematically, even though I I personally would love doing that, but I also like being lazy. Every mathematician I know is. Um, generally lazy. So uh, what we would do is we would use something built in Excel. It's called a what if analysis, because what if we want the total income to be 7 million, right? It's gonna make sense. So let's go to the data tab. Okay, um, before, and one other thing, so, uh, Princess, go ahead and select C4 to C11. I forgot to actually uh, have us do this. C4 to C11. Let's go back to the home tab real quick. I apologize. Let's increase the number of decimals to two decimal places. Now. Uh, increase so the uh, other one. Yeah. Uh, uh, increase. Uh, yeah, there you go. There we go. Sweet. Uh, just as I said before, sometimes it's better to have more decimal. So now that we're, um, you know, presenting this stuff, we're about to make some changes to it. It'll probably be better for our bosses to see what the actual percentage is. So let's go to data. And data tab has some pretty cool things. Um, I use the get get and transform data group, which is that first group over there. I use that in my personal uh, life right now a lot because it allows me to bring in uh, data from text files uh, and CSV files, which you guys will see the CSV in another another situation. You can even pull in um, data from web. I recently did a project uh, with with uh, Yelp, uh, not with Yelp directly, but I use Yelp in my project and I drew information from um, the web, so from Yelp, Yelp's website, but I had to tell it how to pull information in. And then I was able to, um, so based off a of search anyone does on certain things, it automatically get the top 10 items um, without having to actually go to Yelp. So pretty cool. Uh, but anyway, just wanted to, oops, uh, just show, tell you guys some things that you can do with that. So we can go over to the sort and filter group so you guys can take a look at some of those things. We'll, we'll look at those later, but that's how you can sort and filter. Uh, we saw how to do that within a table. It was already like at the drop down of the columns. So this is how we can do that. And we'll do some more advanced filtering as well um, in a couple of weeks. Data tools. I demonstrated the text of columns. Um, I want to say that was two weeks ago that I demonstrated. It might have been even three weeks ago. But how you can take um, text and chain, chain uh, and that are all in one column and split it up. And there's some other data validation tools that are there, which we will use in coming weeks. But the uh, so all this we will look at at some point. Um, we'll look at outlines as well, grouping and ungrouping. Uh, but today, let's go to the what if analysis. This allows us to forecast. And what forecasting is is a way to predict the future based off of current data. So we're going to do what if analysis. So you have three different options here. We have the scenario manager, goal seek, and data table. We'll uh, look at uh, goal seek today. The other two we'll look at in the future. The goal seek is very simple. You tell it a cell that you want to set to a certain value. In this case, we're going to set the total income, B12. So you can type B12 or you can click on B12, whatever you want to do. And uh, so we see we're setting that cell to value. Let's go to the next, um, yeah, 
two value, we're gonna put seven million in there. So that's seven with six zeros. Okay, here we go. Good. And then you click on where it says buy changing cell. So this means we're gonna set B12 to seven million by changing a specific cell. And the cell we're gonna change is B11. This is our other local tax. Okay. So when you press OK, notice and don't so don't press anything else yet, but notice what happened, everyone. It changed B12 to that seven million. Everything else stayed the same, but B11 increased to 1.162 million. Okay. Um, so, and look at it. So we look at our uh, little dialog box. It says goal seek status. It told us its target and it told us what it was able to get to. There are times when you do goal seeking, it's not able to get to the target based off of um, the value you're allowing to change or the cell you're allowing it to change. Okay. Um, but in this case, it was able to get there quite easily. And so you can go ahead and click OK because it got to exactly what we want it to be. Sweet. And we'll look at some other uh, uses of that, as I said, in the coming weeks. Uh, so at this point in time, that is actually everything uh, with A. Let's go to change our page setup as we usually do. So let's go to the page layout tab. Click the uh, page, yes, let's watch the dialog box for page setup. And let's center um, the worksheet horizontally. Change it to, yeah, yep, margins. I don't know if you are, you may have already did it. Yeah, center horizontally, header footer. Oh. No, you're not slow, you're fine. Uh, okay, that's fine. We'll see you later, Tab. Okay, header footer. Have a good weekend, Tabitha. Uh, oh, did it freeze on you again? All right, I was making sure I wasn't frozen. Uh, so I think she may have gotten frozen, possibly. Or it may be getting stuck on her again. I can't put any more videos on Canvas. It's full, so I, I'm sending you guys the links in, in the email. Um, so I will try to put the videos up on YouTube. Um, it takes a lot longer for me, so usually I... I I'll, I'll try to do that um, this weekend. Uh, we'll have to do it for all my classes. And then that means I'll have to go in and make new uh, pages that I'll link out to those videos. So I will try my best to do that this weekend. All right, cool. There she is. She's back in now. Hey, Princess. All right. Uh, oh, is your screen still? I don't know if the new Princess control. Yeah, I'll I'll the uh, I'll send her an email as soon as uh, WebEx uh, loads it. If you guys don't see it, uh, email like if, like it has. If you haven't gotten an email by tomorrow, send me an email. Um, sometimes it takes it takes up to twenty four hours they say to do it, but yeah. All right, so uh, it looks like you're sh you're not sharing Excel right now, Princess. If you could, yeah, there we go. Cool. All right, so we were in the page setup dialog box. Oh, you're welcome, Sandra. Uh, header footer. Okay, so it looks like she already did it, but uh, custom footer, of course, and you all are know the deal. Insert file name. Yep, so cool. Sweet. And what you do was that, yeah, okay. So you can click OK there. Let's go to the revenue chart. And let's go to the page uh, set up dialog box for this guy. Uh, 
Um, and okay, cool. And go to header footer. And yep, let's customize the footer. And let's insert the file name here. Okay. Sweet. Man, it's too bad you had to do that twice. If only there was some way to have done that at one time. Anyone have any suggestions on how we could have done it at one time? Yeah, we could have grouped them. Yeah, you did it. So speaking of which, uh, one of them groups that you can examine both of them at the same time. Um, you can go to print preview. So if you go to file in the backstage view, go to print, it'll show us a print preview. And with them both selected, they're technically both the active sheets. And so I just wanted you all to take a look and see how it looks, especially the chart. So you see how different it is with it actually being a sheet. It would not be that large if we had it on uh, another sheet. We would have had to like try to figure out the expansion of it to see how much it would need to go and all that. It's much easier to make it its own sheet. Uh, you can yeah, you can click on the next page so we can see it. Uh, see. Yeah. Okay. All right. So sweet. So let's go to the info tab and let's add our tags. Our tag will be. Revenue. Looks like it's not letting you. Oh, okay. I know why that's doing that. Uh, if you go, yeah, there you look. Like, are you are you in, able to type in now? There it is. Okay, revenue. Sweet. Okay. So that's it. Uh, you can change your author name if you want to as well. I know because last modified by and plus I'm watching you do it right now, so I know it's you. <laughs> um. But that's it for today's class, you could say. And that was it, everyone. Well, scripture lecture for three days. Um, two project two G is due tomorrow, I believe. Uh, I hope to have all your grades out uh, for everything to turn in um, by Saturday evening, um, so you guys can see how how well you're doing. You all are doing very very well. Uh, I just took some glances real quick because I, I wanted to make sure I like to take quick glances to see if anything's kind of missing. Uh, but yeah, you all are doing very well. So uh, I want to tell you that for one um, and two, how much fun I actually have with um, the five of you uh, regularly. Uh, so thanks for uh, thanks for being a part of this class and making it interesting. Uh, I, I got some changes from you all just for like how I plan to make changes in the future like with the whole scripture lectures making it as extra credit i'm going to try to keep that going uh oh thank you thank you i'm trying try my best <laughs> i'm glad atlanta talk said what's up to me thanks for telling atlanta hi for me thanks olivia uh, like so i'm trying my best but really uh, the only time someone can be really be a good teacher is if there's students that are uh, are actually seeking to learn i mean you pull stuff out so I could just sit here and go through a script and be done with it. And like sometimes I've had to do that in classes and no one know like everyone's like, oh, okay, whatever. Uh, but to actually have to ask questions, pull stuff out of me, like y'all want to learn so much. You ask me to show you shortcuts and things like that, show us the multiple ways to do stuff, and let's know you're interested. And that makes it fun for me too. So teachers can get bored. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think you're doing well as an online learner. I mean, we're all we're online. I know it's not the same as like if you had it just all on your own. Yeah, I don't I don't enjoy that either. So I, I like this kind of setup um, for my own for my own schooling too. So I like to try to give that to students too. So uh, yeah, well, 
if you all don't have any questions, I say uh, we start the weekend five minutes earlier. Oh, thank you. Oh, I hope, hope, hope so. It stays smooth for everyone. So, uh, but yes. Um, yeah, um, this weekend, I don't know if any movies or anything come out. I know there was a bunch of uh, commercials and trailers for some new stuff on Disney Plus, Netflix and all that. So uh, if you guys are into that stuff or you're out and about, have fun, you know, continue to be safe, uh, but enjoy yourselves. And I will see you on Tuesday. If you have any questions over the weekend, please let me know. And if you have not received the email link for the uh, this recording that we just did, please. Uh, email me so I can get that out to everyone.